Well, it's Thursday night, and there's a lot still undecided, they say, in the world tonight. And unbeknownst to you, we are gonna we are gonna come with a message that I think is really going to um, cause you to look at what growth looks like, especially in times of uncertainty, and what mm -hmm. do we really trust on, and um, what what brings us security and comfort. I think it's a pruning. You know, we've been talking about 2020, how it's been a time of pruning. Mm -hmm. I mean, and who would have ever thought that people would have been told they can celebrate Thanksgiving or they can't? Or you shouldn't be with your extended family. You only need to stay with the people in your own household. and You're not going to be allowed in the store um, unless you wear a mask. I mean, and now we have a presidential election. It's like, we're not going to know for days. And now they're suing about, I mean, these, let's say these are unprecedented times, but none of this is a surprise to the Lord. None of this. And so I feel like it's an opportunity for all of us to grow, to build bridges, to watch our critical spirit when we judge what makes us judge, what makes us not judge. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's just a real time of, um, for us as a nation, if us as a family, as a community, to always look for ways to bridge. And um, so I, I, I'm excited about this message. So we're glad you're here. We won't keep you long, but this is our discussion with you, and we hope that you get encouraged by it. So, Pastor, where are we? Okay. Well, um, this is going to be a new series. Uh, keys to, it's basically keys to spiritual renewals. As, what kind of impact has COVID had on mm -hmm. our spirituality? Because, mm -hmm. uh, of course, you know, those had, that are churchgoers haven't been able to go. And if they do, it's been sporadic and it's been in a different setting. And mm -hmm. a lot of things have happened for a lot of people. And uh, yet in the midst of that, there's been some really cool things that have happened. But we're going to look at COVID and its impact, its initial impact that it had. You know, what it did is it forced us to give up a lot of personal freedoms um, for, for medical reasons, you know, of course. Um, whether we agreed with them or not, we were limited by where we could go, what we could do. And it created a lot of downtime, you know, mm -hmm. lockdown time. And, um, and that was actually, you know, as difficult as that was for many people, it was actually a time where people could really look at their lives and mm -hmm. ask the question, so mm -hmm. how, how am I doing? Where am I going, you know? And just to evaluate, you know, your life, your job, your relationships, and your spirituality. And, um, and so that's what has happened is that, you know, in the midst of the stresses and the anxiety, the isolation, the loneliness, um, fears, you know, that we've had about, you know, our health and fears for other people, fears about our job, our future. Uh, where do I live? Is, you know, how's that going to be affected? What's our country going to look like? Um, wh where's my support? Do I have support? Yeah. Uh, people have had, have had difficulty sleeping or even concentrating. Uh, eating patterns have changed. You know, sometimes you just can't go to a restaurant. You you know, it's difficult sometimes just to go to the store, you know, because you have to wait in line and what have you uh, and be separated. And so, you know, things may have become a little bit more, a lot more difficult. Yet, in the midst of this mm -hmm. COVID, uh, we've learned a lot about ourselves and learned about others mm -hmm. and God. And there's uh, interesting um, statistics that I was looking at. And... Uh, the per I, I looked at the percentage of adults who say that as a result of the coron coronavirus outbreak, their own Christian religious faith has become, and this includes both, both Protestants and Catholics, it has become um, stronger. 36% of all Christians, Catholics, Protestants, say that their, that their spirituality, their religious uh, expression has grown or being, become strengthened by 36%. And only 2% said that it was a detriment. Mm. And then another 58% said uh, it, didn't do, it didn't raise it or lower it. It was about the same, nothing really major change. Mm. And there was 5% that said, uh, I'm not really into that, but this is, what I, this is my culture. I, I'm Christian because of this. Um, and so anyway, so that I thought was very interesting to see how we as people have learned to adjust to this COVID thing. And, mm -hmm. um, and in the midst of that, our spirituality, even though we have not had church time, um, has continued to grow because you figured it out. You found places to mm -hmm. grow. And maybe it was just through reading the scriptures on your own or talking to some friends by mm -hmm. phone or Zooming 
uh, going online, going on YouTube and checking out all these or websites and checking out all these different speakers out there. And the fact that you guys, many of you have been following us and we've, as we've been doing this, we've never done this before. Uh, if you guys remember when we first started, we, <laughs> it was a joke. We were hitting buttons and trying to figure this thing out. And so here we are now. Um, don't remind them. Don't remind them. <laughs> and so, so we've learned uh, to adapt to a new normal. And so, but in the midst of that, we've had to let some things go. And so, which is the first key? The first key is that we've had to let it go and let God. It's just mm -hmm. like we had to go to a place where it's like, you know, I don't know what's going on, but mm -hmm. what God does. I think it just, it makes us think of two things. What is our real foundation and what are we clinging to? Mm -hmm. What are we really trusting in? What are we, what are we resting it all in? And I feel like this is kind of exposing that. Yeah. What what do we stand on and who are we connected to? That's good. You know, we don't know um, a lot of times what we have until everything's shaken. Yes. And whatever yes. sits there, whatever lands and, and it stays there, then you know, hey, that's solid. That I can lean or on. It, or it reveals if it was strong or how weak it was. Right. And yep. so if your foundation's not strong, you know, like, you know, build your house upon upon my words and then when the storms come mm -hmm. the house won't fall down right. but if you forget those words and forget what you're really believing in you can see how shaken you would get mm -hmm. and I feel like right now that's really even just with you know the, all that's going on with the election I think it's just really important to know that um, if we're believers we're a part of a kingdom and we have a king and we have mm -hmm. a monarchy and we have to keep our eyes on him because we get our orders from him and our one of the basic orders is is to live simply for him mm -hmm. to love others and to love God and to love others mm -hmm. so this is a time for us to just really see what have we put into our foundation or what have we abided with that's maybe not truth and maybe what God doesn't really want mm -hmm. so when the shaking comes we kind of purify what we believe in mm -hmm. and purify who we trust yeah so I like when you say you know be still and know that I'm God yeah. It's a time of shaking. We need to see that. Right. And in the middle of that, you know, it's like in the Psalms, uh, which you just quoted, Psalms 46, um, there were things that were happening during that time and a lot of shaking going on. And God mm -hmm. had a word for them. You know, he says, I want you to be still mm -hmm. and I want you to know that I'm God. I've, mm -hmm. I've got this. I've got this. And um, and I think that's such a comforting scripture for us, you know, because mm -hmm. he knows he just says like it's good. it's gonna be okay, mm -hmm. it's gonna be okay. I've, mm -hmm. I've got this, and so the the key to be still is to answer the question. Well, how much do I trust God? You know, and when he mm -hmm. says I got this, how much do we believe that? Yeah, I know? think when he says he's got this, it doesn't mean that we're not gonna go through hard times. Right. It doesn't mean that we're still not gonna deal with a lot of sorrow. Right. But he's overcome the world. Mm -hmm. And what we're headed to and what's being prepared for us is far more wonderful than everything, anything we've seen in the beauty that God has already created on this end of heaven. That's right. It's kind of like with, with Noah, when he went through the flood. He went through the flood. He wasn't removed from the earth, mm -hmm. so he didn't have to experience the flood. He was actually in the flood like everyone else. But he on with a bunch of crazy animals. Yeah, but he was put on a, in on an ark, and right? His he family. built an ark and his family. Son in laws, that that's, that's think yeah. about it, you guys. <laughs> being on a little boat with your So you know, so you know, we can say that we love him and, and we trust him for our eternal destiny, but it situations like this that really cause us to really look at the the question, do we trust God for our everyday life? You know, because it's it's not just believing that he's got this taken care of as far as our eternity. But what about today? Mm -hmm. What about tomorrow when you wake up? You know, do you know that he's there? Do you know that he's got this? You know, and, and so do we trust that God is able to work everything out in our lives? And there's that scripture. We are confident that God is able to orchestrate everything mm -hmm. to work towards something good and beautiful when we love him and accept his invitations to live mm -hmm. according to his plan. Mm -hmm. So we have this confidence, you know, which means absolute positive knowledge, which is which one has beyond a doubt. Mm -hmm. And that's what that is saying, mm -hmm. that God is able to orchestrate something beautiful. That word, um, orchestrate everything to work, means to work with its synergy. That's where you get the word synergy, to be more successful because of a merger. Basically, it's saying that like a fellow worker, you work alongside someone, God, in a sense, is like the fellow worker. He himself is working on our behalf. Mm -hmm. And he's causing all things to work together because he comes alongside us 
And he, then he says, I, I've got this. Come mm -hmm. on, come along. Let's partner here mm -hmm. and I'll walk you through this. We're going to do this together. And so sometimes, you know, things that are terrible and horrible happen in life. Mm -hmm. It's not because God brings it to us. He doesn't bring evil upon people. Mm -hmm. But we live in a world that is unfair. We live in a world that is broken and fallen. Mm -hmm. And sometimes bad things happen to good people. And, um, and good things happen to bad people. Absolutely. And it's just, we don't, it doesn't make sense. It seems unfair, but just, it, it is what it is. And um, there, in the French Academy of Science in France, there is a rather plain old shoemaker's awl on display. The story behind the awl is quite extraordinary. Uh, you look at it, you would suspect that the simple tool would be responsible for anything, right? It's just, a, it's just an awl. But What's it, an awl? It's it's like a it's like a uh, almost like a, if you were to get a screwdriver and put a point on it. Oh yeah, I've seen those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so in fact, um, but this thing, what it did is it caused tremendous pain. This was the all that one day fell from his table and it put out the eye of the shoemaker's nine-year-old son, mm. right? And then uh, it got infected and he lost both eyes mm. through that one thing. So he was blind, um, and so the injury was so severe that he, you know, for the rest of his life. And so what he did, though, um, he learned to read because his father put together these big wooden blocks and he, he would carve out letters. And the little boy learned how to read uh, by looking at and feeling these letters, right? And then later on, the father started thinking, you know, I'm going to make a, a, um, I'm going to make a way for my son to read where I'm going to get the all and I'm going to mark the paper and put little bumps on it. And each bump is going to mean something for my son. And I'm going to teach my son how to read mm -hmm. this thing. And so this no, this little boy mm -hmm. learned how to read it, uh, learned how to read. And so he, all these dots were became a, a new reading system. And the man's name was Louis Braille. And that's where we get the word Braille mm -hmm. from. And so something as horrible as this, his son losing his eyes because of an accident. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. and he used the same instrument. To make something beautiful. To make something for many people that are blind, yeah. so they all can read. Yeah. I think that's, that's something beautiful. As hard as it was, I'm sure for him. Yeah, yeah that but, was a hard story. But it works together for good, and that's kind of like of a picture of God. Sometimes we don't understand why things happen, but mm -hmm. somehow he gets something that may have been an instrument of pain, mm -hmm. and he turns it around, mm -hmm. and he makes it, you know, something that blesses you mm -hmm. and others, right? And so I think that's a, a beautiful way to uh, to kind of look at this. And so, which leads to another question. Uh, do we trust that God has good planned for us? You know, because sometimes bad doesn't happen. So what is God's heart for this? What does God desire for us, right? I and, think of that verse, you know, in Jeremiah, I know the plans that I have for you, plans for a hope and a future. Um, and that, that I've always liked that verse because it's comforting to me. Because mm -hmm. sometimes you do feel like when, when you're in the middle of a kind of a wilderness, and you can't see the path that well. Well, you know, you wonder: Is God really working? Is God really happy with me? You know, some of us that have grown up in organized religion, sometimes we can get the wrong concept of God, and when bad things mm -hmm. happen, it, we think we're being punished, right? Um, or it's because we did something, or we're not doing enough right things. Um, and so, anyway, I just, it, yeah, it. It's it's hard. It is. It's hard. You have to trust. You have to believe in the character of God. Yeah. And you have to cling to it in the dark. That's right. You know, and in that scripture, it talks about God having uh, planned it out, plan, plans to take care of us, mm -hmm. uh, not to abandon us, plans to give us a future that we can hope for, like you just said. Mm -hmm. And then he says, when you call on me, when you come and pray to me, I'll listen. Mm -hmm. uh, when you come looking for me, you'll find me. Mm -hmm. And he says, well, yes, when you get serious about finding me, and want it more than know, anything else, yeah, I'll good. make sure you won't be disappointed. So there comes a point where we might say, yeah, you know, I, I'm a follower of the Lord or whatever. But then there comes a day where maybe things are happening that are really difficult for us to handle. And we start to get anxious. We start to stress. We start to, you know, whatever. Or we're in pain. And then we say, you know, God, I man, I'm talking to you now. I'm praying. Um, I'm really, really serious and, and sincere in my... And and so sometimes it goes. We have to go through th difficult situations before we're awakened again to the things of God and recognizing that He's there and that we actually call out to Him mm -hmm. with a sincere heart. Mm -hmm. But guess what? He hears us. Mm -hmm. He hears us. Um, in Psalm forty verse five, it says, "O Lord, our God, no one can compare with you. Such wonderful works and miracles are all found with you, and you think of us all the time with mm -hmm. your countless expressions of love." 
far exceeding our expectations. So you it's like always think, you of, think us of us all of the time with your count. What what version is that? That's in the uh, Passion Translation. You think of cool? us all the time with your countless expressions of love. Wow, exceeding our expectations. That's a good verse. That's good, I'd like yeah. to put that on my wall. Yeah, yeah, and um, which leads to the next one. Um, not only does he think about us, not only does he have great plans for us to give us a future and a hope, but at this in very Zephaniah. moment in Zephaniah, Adonai, your God, is in your midst. He's a mighty savior. He will delight with you, over you, with joy. He will quiet you with his love, and he will dance for joy over you with singing. And so that word, your God is in your midst, means he's in the middle, he's in the, in the inner part. It says even the inner organs, the bowels, the inner being. I mean, that's how, like, he is there, right? He is the center. That's TMI. That's yeah. what they say in my line of work. We don't get into talking about the bowels, but yeah. And it's referred to the inner organs of the body. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how close he is with us, right? And he is a mighty savior, which means actually a proven warrior, if you look at it in the Hebrew. Mm. He's a mighty hero, one who overpowers his enemies, a proven warrior. And then he says he will delight with over you with joy. So, so the question by a theologian, uh, he asks, how could the sovereign creator concentrate his whole being in the love of a temporal creature of dust? How could the holy s satisfy himself contentedly in the loving contemplation of the unholy, those of us that are not perfect, of course, all of us. I would propose that one aspect of the answer is that we are in indissoluble, mm. immutable covenant with the Son of His love. What does that mean? God has made an agreement. He's made a covenant with us. It's like, you know what? I love you guys. And I am making this, this covenant. We are in Christ, and the Father will mm -hmm. never see us as unholy sinners, but He sees us as saints in His Son. I love it. This next one I really love because it says, He will quiet us with His love. And for those of us that are moms, we know what it's like sometimes when mm -hmm. our kids are getting antsy or if they've been hurt, we just want to hold them mm -hmm. and we sing to them. And sometimes when we sing, there are a lot of kids that remember either their grandmother, their mother, or their father, someone singing over them. And when they started singing, they just knew that all was right, that everything was right in the world. Yeah. And so that's really sweet to know that our Heavenly Father really wants to quiet us with his love. So mm -hmm. right now, there are some people that are really traumatized by mm -hmm. the election and and feel really strongly about who they wanted to win and right. really feel like it was God's will. And and we really, one of the best prayers you can pray is, God, your kingdom come, your will be done. Mm -hmm. But just know right now, he is quieting you. He wants to quiet you with his love. That's right. It's his love. He's twirling them in the midst of you, around you, over you, with inexpressible love. He wants to quiet you with his love. And it says, he will dance for joy over you with singing. So he's celebrating you. He's celebrating you. He's right. got great plans in your life. Don't pull away from him. Mm -hmm. Don't feel like he's not a God to be trusted. Right. This is time like never before to understand that his sovereignty, there is reason. And we have to lean and trust. That's right. That's right. You know, um, in the middle of what's happening, um, you know, with society and you know, the elections and COVID and happening all over the world is that we have to recognize that we as spiritual beings, we are having a human experience, right? We are more spiritual beings and humans mm -hmm. than having, you know, we're just having a human experience. And so we're going to be disappointed with elections. We're going to be disappointed with how things didn't work or worked out for us. You know, there's, that's just, that's life. Mm -hmm. uh, but just remember that you're part of a kingdom. You're part of an eternal kingdom because you walk with the Lord, you walk with the mm -hmm. King of Kings, right? And so one day he will establish his kingdom here on this earth and he will make it right. It will become just and things will be done right. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the meantime, we do what we do, you know, and we do what We're we can. We're supposed to love because love right. and believes and bears and hopes and endures all things. That's right. Makes no record of wrongs. That's right. So, so then do we trust that God will not give us more than we can handle? Because you might be feeling overwhelmed right now you might be feeling like oh my gosh what's going to happen to this world what's going to happen to america what's going to you know, or having problems in your family oh, at with home the, yeah with the, the relationship that it's just you guys i can't take it anymore I can't, right. I can't handle this and now that this thing has spiked again um you know now they're like talking about oh we're going to lock down again are we going to you know and so that's really causing a whole bunch of stress and we've already been this is since march so we've been doing this since march right we're done all of us are <laughs> done but the bottom line is that, you know, can we handle more? Well, I trust and believe that, yes, we can if 
we look at the he way that God sees it. Right, yeah. right. He says it's in Corinthians, no test or temptation that comes your way is beyond the course of what others have had to face. We're all facing this together. Mm -hmm. All you need to remember is that God will never let you down. He'll never let you be pushed past your limit. Mm -hmm. He'll always be there to help you come through it. That's, uh, that's in the message. So, so he will provide a way of escape. He will, and actually the interesting thing is that he will provide a way of escape through others. So that's why we can connect, let's say through Zoom or you know this way, uh, YouTube, whatever, different ways that we can kind of make connections, spiritual connections. Mm -hmm. um, but you can also make connections just by a phone call. You can make connections in so many other ways. We can help each other. We can pray for each other, encourage one another. And so we do this, and that gives us strength to be able to continue to push through. And so the conclusion is based on all that that we know about God's heart for us, how do we respond? What is our opportunity to do mm. to respond? And it's Philippians that you shared a little bit, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it was last week or week don't before. Don't be anxious about anything. Yes. But through prayer and supplication, make your requests be made known unto God. So that whatever is pure, is that the one? And the peace of God. And the peace of God that passes all man's understanding will rest in your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Exactly. So, so, um, so Paul is encouraging us saying, look, don't be anxious. Your anxieties, give it to God. Mm -hmm. Leave it as His hands. Trust Him for this, right? And yeah, claim a verse that really comforts you, that He loves you exceedingly, mm -hmm. that He wants what's good in your life. He knows the plans He has for you. If it's a broken relationship you're stressing about, if it's your finances, if it's your health, just know that He is an overcomer. And yes, there will be hard times on this side. Mm -hmm. We will have physical ailments. We will have emotional disappointments um but he wants to hold us during that time and he will see us through that's right that's right amen so so the key is for us to just look to him mm -hmm. trust him and uh and just grow in your walk with him and so you're doing well um as far as so far being able to handle all that's happening we as a people uh, our spirituality has been actually been growing for a lot of people uh, I'm very encouraged as a pastor to hear that, to, to look at the st statistics. But at the same time, I want to make sure that all of you are okay. And so I just I'm, we hope that the scriptures that were shared tonight uh, mm -hmm. would give you that sense of hope and give you that sense of encouragement and strength so that you can just continue to press in and say, you know, God is with me. I know he's with me and he's going to take care of this. He's going to take care of all of us. So we just have to trust him. Irrespective of how things look or whatever, just look to him. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 So let yeah, me just pray a blessing on sure. you, Father. I just pray peace. I pray blessings, Lord God, on uh, every single person that hears this message, that they would hear from you, um, and that they would know, Father, your love. They would experience you deeply, uh, Father, and that they would just rest and let go of whatever they struggle with. Like, leave it at your feet and just trust you for how the results are going to go, knowing that you're with us every step of the way. Mm -hmm. Sometimes things are not fair, Lord God, and we don't understand why, but we know that you, Lord do you know what's happening and you know why it's happening and we just can all we can do is look to you and trust that you're going to work it out Thank so you, father Lord. it's yours mm -hmm. we give it to you even now in jesus name amen, amen. love you guys we'll right. see you next week take okay, care bye-bye